the contraption I'm building today is phase one of a soil fertility experiment. It's not a Johnson Sioux bioreactor, but it is inspired by their design. Just look at it. It is hokey pokey composting. You stick your left leg in, you stick your left arm out, you let the microbes do the hokey pokey so you don't have to turn the compost around. That's what it's all about. I'm out here at sunrise because it's a brand new dawn for composting here at Simple Moon Farm. This parcel is tucked away on the back of our property so large unsightly compost piles shouldn't bother Wendy too much. Composting requires materials high in nitrogen, the greens, and materials high in carbon, the browns. Combine those two elements and give the microbial life, both bacterial and fungal, the conditions to thrive in, and you will produce good compost. The green material I mostly want to compost out here is grass clippings. As you can see, we have a tremendous amount of lawn to work with here. The browns will mostly be sawdust. There's an Amish sawmill not too far away. Sawdust is a waste product for them, and they have a mountain of it. The stuff isn't free, but it's practically free. I've already done some tests out here, forking and shoveling layers of that stuff out of the back of my pickup. We get a lot of thunderstorms out here. I'm happy to say that the grass and sawdust didn't just blow away, but probing it later with a pitchfork revealed that just below the surface layer of those compost piles that were nicely soaked from all that rain, the rest of the piles were dry. I'm afraid that the quantities of material that I need to compost all at once will necessarily make my compost piles hydrophobic. The fine texture of mown grass and sawdust may just pack together so tightly that it doesn't let rain soak in. At the scale I'm working with, I was able to heap up fully stacked compost piles all at once. The microbial life that really does all the composting work for us also needs air and water. I've spread out those first three compost piles. So the material can soak up the rain that it needs. This stuff is thistle. Now I believe weeds do have a purpose. I think they're God's way of getting photosynthesis going above ground where it otherwise wouldn't normally have a chance and roots growing underground where they wouldn't normally have a chance. But thistle is a pest. Our goats won't even eat it. Plus, there's a law in Missouri, an unenforceable law, that you have to try and control the thistle before it goes to seed. I believe the highest and best purpose for thistle will be as biomass for our compost piles. I also think their structure and texture will help add moisture and air right into the middle of the compost pile. And that's where I want to keep the thistle, right where the composting action is the hottest. The contraption I'm building today is phase one of a soil fertility experiment. It's not a Johnson Sioux bioreactor, but it is inspired by their design. One key to the system, I think, will be to pre-wet the materials as I layer them into the compost heap. We're on well water out here. If you're on city water, you may want to consider letting your water sit out in five gallon buckets overnight, or maybe a day or two. That way the chlorine has a chance to evaporate. They put chlorine in the water to kill microbial life. It's the microbial life that we're trying to feed and nurture in the composting process.
I'm using PVC drainage pipe. They have uh, pre-drilled holes here and they come in 10 foot lengths. I've already cut up all my pieces and I've got a whole bunch of fittings here. Plus a few more in here. I'll show you what it all looks like once I'm done. Wow, welcome to Moon Base One composting station. This thing on the ground is a little bigger than it was as a design in my head. It's something to see as you're walking up the hill and the structure slowly reveals itself. I've already adjusted my original design. Essentially what I've built are two main components of an expandable system. Once I put those two components together, it just looked like it needed a little more aeration. So I put in these, let me show you. So I put in these separate vertical pipes and I just bungee corded them on. They're not attached to the rest of the structure. I've used these uh, kind of old style, all rubber and metal bungee cords. They should hold up a little better to the elements and to the composting. And the resistance gives it just really a lot of uh, extra support for the, for the whole structure. So that's, that can't be a bad thing. The structure is a little complicated. Did I make it clear enough in the video that it's a good idea to lay out your parts and pieces 
so you know exactly which end is up and which side is up. The arms and legs are all five feet long. These middle sections are three feet long and all the little tiny slip cuffs, I'm not sure what to call them, are just five inch pieces that I cut out of other pipes. The very ends have elbows that end in another, another port that you can add water to. All of the arms have the female end up and all of the legs have the male end down. The legs have, oh, I'm not gonna get it off right now. The legs have a cap on the end. That way water doesn't just flow straight through. It has a chance to back up and leak out those holes. Each module is all glued together, but the two separate modules are not. I'm probably gonna wanna be able to move this around later. So you can just easily slip those apart and move each section. These elbows aren't glued on either. That way they can be slipped off and another module added if I need to do that. It's entirely possible that this thing doesn't have enough pipes for aeration. I just don't know yet. This is my first experiment. If it turns out that it needs more pipes, it should be fairly easy to find a couple dozen places to bungee cord on more of those more of those extra pipes. Those extra vertical pipes are about seven feet tall, by the way. The structure is large. If you're gonna build one of these yourself, you may wanna make all the legs a little bit shorter. But remember, I'm gonna be working from the back of my pickup truck, hauling stuff out here to compost. So I'm gonna be up high enough to easily shovel and rake and pitchfork on material and then pour water into the, into the upper ports. My plan isn't to add a whole lot of water all the time. I'm thinking I'll just add a little bit of water each time I add material to the pile. Also, I'm hoping that condensation helps me. Remember when all the parts and pieces were in the back of my truck? I had parked that truck out here the night before and condensation just, you know, really soaked it. So I'm hoping that without any extra effort from me for watering, water will naturally collect on those pipes and just drain down into the pile. Okay, so this is important. I didn't want to forget this. All of the arms have the whole side up and all of the legs have the whole side down. That way, when you pour the water in, it flows in and then leaks out into the pile. The connector sections have the holes on the bottom and it doesn't really matter where the vertical pipes have their holes. Of course, the elbows, the little arms on the end, do need to have the holes up so water can flow down into it. Just look at it. It is hokey pokey composting. You stick your left leg in, you stick your left arm out, you let the microbes do the hokey pokey so you don't have to turn the compost around. That's what it's all about. Some people make a big deal about aerobic versus anaerobic composting. Obviously, all of this work is to try and make this composting a little more aerobic. But really, there's room in nature for both, so maybe there should be room for both in our compost piles. Don't beat yourself up if some of your compost seems to be going anaerobic. It's actually been a few days since I built this. I'm back here on a nice day in the early morning to take advantage of cool weather. What I have to do now is pitchfork all the grass and sawdust from the original three piles underneath this structure. I'm not an expert, but it looks to me that this white stuff is already a little bit of fungal activity happening in the compost.
this part of the pasture, which is real close to our house, is some place that Wendy is thinking about eventually putting another big garden. It's a good spot to try and establish some more organic matter. And she doesn't mind looking at a compost pile because... It'll be hidden behind our big apple tree. This compost pile will also have some old thistle incorporated into it. This compost pile will be a control for that experiment. I'm going to pre-wet this material and heap it up, but I'm not going to add the pipe for internal aeration or irrigation. Of course, there had been a very big, very nicely shaped compost pile here before. I spread it out at the same time I did those others, so this material could soak up the rain as well. We've had plenty of rain since then. had so many projects going on. The lawn has gotten away from me, so there's just a lot of grass right now to work with. Man, the bugs are really loud out here today. I hope you can hear me. Clearly the pile isn't big enough to use the ports to pour in water yet, but I brought some water anyways. I'm just gonna dump it on. Those cicadas can be intense, 
they're a little less loud over on this side. I just wanted to do a quick side note and let you know about this. It's kind of a rare event. The cicadas come every 13 years, and forgive me for just reading it off the phone here. Uh, this particular one in May and June, which is this time of year of 2024, it's brood number 19. It's a 13 year cycle. There's four different species involved. And the last time they saw this particular brood was in 2011. We're brand new here to Missouri, so we don't really know what to expect. I'm kind of glad to know that this, this really loud noise isn't going to be a normal every year kind of thing. Let's see. Uh, the Great Southern Brood, as it's called, includes 15 different states. It's one of the largest geographically. And this is also pretty interesting. Brood number 13 up in Illinois is hatching or emerging, whatever they say, at the same time this year. And that doesn't happen very often. The last time was in 1803 and Thomas Jefferson was the president. I realized two things on my first test run here. One, getting the truck close enough to the feet here is a little tricky. And these ports just don't reach over far enough for me to safely reach them from the bed of the truck. It's a pretty easy fix. I'm just going to have to get some more elbows to reduce the angle and put some extenders out over that. Probably about three feet I think would do about fine. That way it's extending out above the, the cab of the truck and I can drive under it. The other thing I realized is I want another control compost pile. This one will not have the aeration and it will not be pre-wetted. Just dry material, layered, and uh, I'll probably throw in some thistle too. So this grass just has whatever moisture was already in it. I haven't added any extra water. I'm not going to add any extra water to the sawdust either. And it will go right here in the remains of one of my first test compost piles. It's been a few weeks. I've gone ahead and added the arm extensions. Turns out those elbows work better at the very ends so they can be turned up and water can just be poured right down into them. I've also added two more vertical seven foot aeration pipes, one on either end. What a difference throughout this video. When I first started, the cicadas had not emerged yet. And then they were so crazy you could hardly think now it's starting to get a little more quiet again. The grass out here in the pastures is a little bit taller than it had been. My compost pile is getting deeper. I've had a chance to mow a couple times. When I'm bringing the sawdust and grass out here to compost, I'm also bringing water. And I do that in five gallon buckets with lids on them so they don't slosh around too much and spill all over the place. But it's a lot easier to use this bucket with a little spout to to pour the water where I want it to go. So that's what I've been doing. Let's do a quick little test so you can see, hopefully see, how the water drips through the system. I am a little disappointed that the arms aren't all perfectly at the right angle. But believe it or not, this was my very first project 
cutting up and gluing together PVC pipe. Overall, I think I did a pretty good job for my first time. I'm not a horticultural expert, and I didn't study microbiology in college, so forgive me if I get some of the technical details wrong, or don't fully explain everything the way it should be. I'm living in Missouri now, so just call me Missouri Shrewd, not a science dude. Thanks for watching. Remember, your dreams are closer than the moon. Thanks for taking this trip around the moon with us.